creator, not what you normally think of. He writes articles and strategy guides okay. for a uh, Famitsu app. Oh, very nice. Yeah, you can read them in app. So Baron, of course, we got the faces, uh, the cameras on the faces of the players. Baron is beloved for his facial expressions. <laughs> and Fuji bringing out the flying machine early on. He has to go to defensive minor uh -oh. to block it. Flying machine is a very long range, but not long enough to reach those goblins on the other side. All right, we got the princess out the right side. Maybe try to get a snipe onto that go uh, flying machine. No, the goblin's going to take care of it instead. Flying so, machine out the right side couldn't get a whole lot of value in there either. Baron has already shown us enough cards. Even if this is your first Clash Royale tournament, you know what he's playing, right? Spellbait. We have the classic Goblin Barrel Princess and Goblin Gang. We have to see what spells Fuchi are going to play because it's going to be very, very important here. Lava Hound comes out for Fuchi. That is a big flying tank that is going to turn into a smaller swarm of attacking lava pups. Baron is going to have to make sure that that Lava Hound does not blow up on his tower and unleash all of those lava pups because he'd be in trouble if they did. I think I'm starting to see why Fuchi countered that Goblin Barrel with a Miner now. He's got almost no ground-based troops in his deck, relying entirely on the air. He's making a big assault out the right lane, but hasn't connected on the tower yet. His Miner chip on the left is the only he's gotten so far. And Baron has gotten the better of this early exchange. The first minute or so into the game, both of Fuji's towers have a little bit of a black eye, and Baron's towers are standing strong. Fuji called himself a 6 out of 10 on creativity, but this is certainly uh, a new deck to me. It's surprising uh, a lot of people in the stands here, and I'm, I'm sure uh, of those watching at home. Let's see. What's nope. interesting... Goblin's not going to get any value. Log rolled through him. What's interesting about Fuji as a player is he only plays exactly what he needs to play in order to win. Multiple times during the Japanese finals, he would only play like five cards or six cards in his whole deck and never actually play the last one or two cards because huh. he just had a cycle that was working and didn't feel the need to mix it up. Taking a little bit of damage at the left, it's uh, kind of revealing the weakness of this deck that Fuji's running. So many aerial troops uh, can deal a lot of damage uncontested. You know, Baron's Knight certainly can't reach those flying machines. But without anything to block those heavy hitters on the ground, He's just taken a little bit of reliable chip damage here, left and right side now, down to nearly half hit points. And now that we're at double elixir time, though, this is going to turn it around a little bit for Fuji. He has a big tank. He wants to spend a lot of elixir putting together his push, and he's got to get around that Inferno Tower on defense. When you have double elixir, you certainly have more ability to do that, and he's got to push through on one side. Baron, great job keeping up the pressure on the left lane, getting it down to 507 damage left. Zap's going to reset the Inferno Tower, giving the Lava Hound a second life here, but I don't know if he's going to be able to punch through 2,000 damage in the next 20 seconds. Yeah, it was Fuji's time to shine, but that Inferno Tower is shown even brighter, tearing apart that Lava Hound. Left side now down to 507, almost in rocket range. Baron is getting awfully close. He likely has that as his last and final card in this deck, but the Goblins are going to get it down anyways. Baron with the 1-0 clean sweep of Fuji, barely takes any damage on either of his towers, hard countering his opponent and getting himself the up advantage, and he's pushing through. Here we are, game number two. Baron in blue along the bottom, Fuji in red along the top. Advantage for Baron as this best of three match could conclude right here and now if he gets the win. Fuji needs to turn it around and go for the reverse sweep if he wants to claim this match and move on to the quarterfinals. Knight's coming down in the right-hand lane for both players. The Red Knight's going to keep that princess healthy, so Miner has to pop up behind her and give her the shovel to the face. Does a good job at it. Bats at the left lane don't get a whole lot of damage in, though. No tank in front of them. Fuji sitting at 10 Elixir for a little while here. Let's see what his counter's going to be to this big Goblin Gang out the right. He's got a Goblin Gang in his own. Looking awfully uh, similar in terms of win condition, but Baron actually has a much heavier deck. That Mega Knight landing on the left side knocks out those Goblins and will go in for a big counter push. Let's see what Fuji has to knock it down. And the question for me is, does Fuji's version of Spellbait Whoa. play an Inferno Tower? Because Balloon from Baron is going to pull it over. He has Tesla, so he does have at least a building to pull it over. But it's not shooting the balloon. One drop gets in, and he manages nice. to take it nice out. I think Christmas came early for Fuji, and able to uh, throw that little snowball onto the balloon there. Unfortunately, he's going to lose his princess to the balloon death damage, but looking like he's holding on uh, relatively well here. Not a whole lot of damage for either Fuji or Baron just yet in this match. Can he defend this princess from the miner? No. Mike, come on. King, he's awfully close. That's, That's why he ignored it. King Tower activation early for Fuji, and Baron has made a big error. Super difficult to make a comeback after that big defensive advantage is set up, and Fuji's got to be happy about that. Yeah, because now what he can do is use his Tesla Towers and other uh, defensive troops, pulling troops into the middle, into that the light uh, alley right cutting through the center of the arena where all three towers will shoot for since well a severe amount of damage yeah. he's got to stop this inferno dragon from locking on ice spirit jumps freezing it in place and goblin barrels coming out to do some damage then again it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world for baron he's relying more on big heavy hits from the balloon or the mega knight even he's not too worried about little chippy defensive uh setups from fuji 
but it can't help him at all to have uh, the King Tower activated there. Great knight placement. Stops the Mega Knight from leaping onto the Tesla Tower. It's going to hold it in place while the tower just picks away little shots at it. Nice minor placement from Baron here. There's actually only a couple of uh, tiles in the, in the corner up there to avoid being shot at by the King. And a great catch as well in the back end. Goblin Gang finishes off the uh, barrel there, but the Prince does get a couple of shots off there, bringing that left side down to 1700. Fuji has pulled ahead in damage now. And despite playing very different decks, the damage is near even as the last 30 seconds are counting down. We are in double elixir time, just 20 seconds away from overtime. And if we make it to overtime, the stakes are raised even more because the first tower to go down, that's all it, that's the winner. The dangerous thing for Baron in this situation, though, is even though he wants to apply pressure in that bottom right corner with the Miner to try to prevent the uh, King Tower from locking on, it's really easy for Fuji to get a read on where that Miner's going to go and try to block it on his uh, own and prevent that damage entirely. Fuji defending very well against the balloon out here on the left and applying pressure once again out the left. The fact that Baron is running Zap rather than Log means that he's got nothing to finish off those goblins with one hit. Great Tesla Tower mechanic there. Once the Tesla's done attacking, it goes into its little hidey hole. It went underground, and when the balloon blew up, it didn't damage the Tesla Tower, giving you an extra 10, 15, 20 seconds of damage. And now he's got two Teslas wow. out. This is a really hard defensive base to crack. And watch the other one move back into the hidey hole. Princess not so lucky. Gucci once again missing with the Goblin Barrel connection, but getting pretty decent value rolling the log through the Goblin Gang at the left side and chipping it even further down. Haven't seen an eighth and final card in this deck, but it could be uh, a big surprise hit. The Rocket deals a ton of damage, and it's a very popular inclusion in these log bait decks. And the Miner gets intercepted by the Goblin Gang, letting the Princess live. She turns and switches onto the Balloon while the Tesla Tower takes a few shots. Princess is going to go down again, but I think he's doing a great job holding it off. Baron repulsed time and time again. He's yet to connect in a big way. And with 458 on the left side tower, Fuji with a six elixir rocket will wipe it out. 493 and three is the name of the game. Fuji ties up this match one to one against the tower. Stops a five cost balloon, so on and so forth until eventually he just had that advantage both in damage and elixir to finish the game off. But we are down to a winner take all battle. Number three of this match. After this battle, we'll be halfway through the first round of the World Finals. Already? Yes, sir. Fuji opening up with Giant. The first time we've seen Giant today. Five Elixir, the highest amount of health per Elixir cost in the game. If you need something to hold the line, Ooh, yeah. go get your Giant out. Looks like the Giant's going to be paired up with a lot of flying critters here, but a bad sign for Fuji as the Executioner comes in to chop them down. He can get great value against uh, minions, whether they're in horde form or just the trio. Nice strike on the right side for Baron, though. He does manage to get a little bit of damage off the right side tower from that Hog Rider. Giant gets a few punches in. Of course, he goes straight for the tower, so he's going to ignore the little troops in the bottom. Not even a minute into the game, this is an MVP Executioner, and he's already taken out 12, 17 Elixir worth of troops before he even crossed the Goodness. bridge. Chopping him apart. Fuji's in a lot of trouble here. It's going to require some very careful play and trying to manipulate the Executioner out of Baron's hand in order to get value. I think he's done a pretty decent job here, though. As the Executioner crosses the bridge, we'll see what Fuji has to counter him. Adaptation is the name of the game. We've spent the first minute 20 learning what kind of decks they got. Giant, uh, Fuji's going to play a Giant and back it up with some support trips. Oh, Baron's got the Hog Rider. My goodness! Huge Executioner swing destroys a minion horde, and the Hog Rider is left alone on the right side tower. That that princess takes a beating as she goes down to 485, and Baron pulls far ahead in this match. Those are the kind of plays that win Clash Royale World Championships. With his last bet of health, the Executioner pulls a no-scope 360, <laughs> throws that axe, cleans out a five elixir. If that, if that Executioner hadn't done anything else, that would have been an even trade, five for five. It had already earned some value. To take out that uh, minion horde is, it's reminiscent of when Clyde lost to Chief Pat because his uh -oh. own minion horde blew up from the golem at the King's Cup 1. Hogwire's going to finish it off. Baron needs to hold tight for the next 52 seconds in order to move on to the next round. The unfortunate thing for Fuji, though, is that he's having to push on his weak lane. Hold on now, this is a split attack, actually. An Ice Spirit to freeze the minions on the left lane, and it seems that a tornado is going to end his hopes of being able to attack the left side. Still, though, a giant has already pummeled the right side tower down to 1101. It's possible that Fuji is actually going to get more damage out of this game than Baron, but the fact that Baron was able to concentrate it on the right side tower means that it's looking like he's very likely to win in the next 23 seconds. There is only one hit point that matters, and it is the very last one. Fuji deals more damage throughout this game, but with 14 seconds to go, Baron just needs to hold on with a 1,000 on each tower in order to get away with the win and move on to the quarterfinals. 
They say the best defense is also a good offense. Baron is showing that that is true. Hog Riders have torn apart Fuji's left and right side towers. The right side going down means Baron has